Adding food to your chronometer diary might seem super simple and straightforward, and for the most part, it is. But in today's video, I'm gonna be going over all the different ways that you can add food to your chronometer diary to make tracking as easy as possible. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome to the third video in the chronometer video series. Last video, we talked all about setting calorie and macro targets, how to calculate them using my free Notion calorie calculator. So if you haven't already grabbed that, I'll go ahead and also leave a link down in the description for that. But in today's video, we're going over all the different ways that you can add food to your chronometer and diary. So let's go ahead and start with the mobile app. So the first way to add food to your diary is, in my opinion, probably a little a lesser known way to do that. So when you have the chronometer app on your phone, one way to add food to it is you can go ahead and just long hold it. And then right here, you can go ahead and click on add food. So if we go ahead and click on that, it brings us into our diary to the area where we can go ahead and add food. So let's say we're eating a red bell pepper. We can go ahead and select that, add it. And just like that, we went ahead and added some food to our diary. So that's the first way that you can add food to your diary and chronometer on the mobile app. Now there's another way that you can add food to your diary and that is by clicking the plus sign in the top right. So if we go ahead and click on that plus sign in the top right, there we go ahead and see that there's a prompt to add food. So we go ahead and click on that, go ahead and add in this Kirkland Signature Three Berry Blend, go ahead and add that to our diary. And that's the second way that we can go ahead and add food to our diary. The third way that we can go ahead and add food to our diary is clicking the plus sign in the bottom of the screen there and clicking on add food, which brings us to this section again. We'll go ahead and select this Kirkland Signature Rolled Oats, go ahead and add that to to diary. And that is another way that we can go ahead and add food. Now, the last way that we can go ahead and add food to the diary is there's all these plus signs next to all these meals, which is really handy. If you know, you're going throughout the day, you've already had breakfast, you've already had lunch, maybe you've had a snack. And instead of just adding a food to like that first meal, you can go ahead and add it to a specific meal. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and add this to meal four, you can go ahead and click on the plus sign next to meal four, click on add food and select something from there. So we'll go ahead and just select this olive oil as a nice little snack and put that in under meal four. So those are all the different ways that you can go ahead and add food, but there's a couple different ways that you can find foods. Now, one of them uh, being the most obvious and one of the benefits to using something like an app, specifically chronometer, is to scan the barcode. So what you can do is you can go ahead and press on the plus sign and click on the scan food. And this is where you can go ahead and find the barcode scanner. So you can go ahead and scan anything that has a barcode. And this is a really quick, really easy way to go ahead and find a food to add to your diary. We can do the same thing by uh, pressing the plus sign next to a meal. Again, if we wanted to add um, something by scanning the barcode to a specific meal, that would be the way that we would do that. We just click on that plus sign then click on the scan barcode. And there we have the barcode scanner pop right up. And again, this is great for anything that comes in a package, uh, just a really quick and easy way to add things to your diary. Now, no matter which way you found a way to to add a food, whether that's from the home screen, whether that's from the plus sign at the top right, the plus sign next to the meal, the plus sign at the bottom. When we're in this area here to go ahead and add food, finding the right food is obviously important. Um, and so there's a couple different tools built into Chronometer that will help you do that. So, you know, right now, let's say we're searching for an apple. We can go ahead and see at the top right that there's some different tabs. And right now we're under the all tab. So that's obviously just gonna go ahead and select everything that is in, you know, that you can search for in chronometer. But there are some things that you can use in here to make tracking on a day to day basis a little bit easier. So for example, the second thing here is favorites. So if I go ahead and click on favorites, we have everything in here that is, you know, has apple in it and is a favorite. This is great. Uh, gummy bears and high newts, <laughs> uh, you know, for those daily basis type foods that we want to want to find in there. Uh, but to go ahead and create something uh, and turn it into a favorite, you go ahead and just select on whatever it is. And then you'll see at the top, of the screen there it has the name of the food and a little star next to it and all you need to do is click on that star and then that star will get fully colored in and that's how you know it is a favorite and now if we go over to favorites we have that third item in the favorites here the apple fresh with skin so again if there's specific brands or just foods that you eat on a regular basis adding them to the favorites is a really good way to just have them in that list there super easily now if we go ahead and come over here to the 
next section, we have the custom section. So the custom section is where you can find everything that you've customly created. And there's a few different things that you can create. You can create a custom meal, you can create a custom recipe, as well as a custom food. Now I'll get into what those are and how to create those in the next video. Uh, but just know that once you create those down in the food section, again, the custom meal recipe or food where you can find them is under this custom section here. So here under the common food section, so chronometer says that the common food section will show results from our highest quality nutrition databases, and will typically have the most nutrition information available for a particular food. So this is a great place to go ahead and look for the food with the most data. Now what's great about chronometer is that even if you don't go under the common food section is that it will typically go ahead and fill in the nutrients available for a similar food item to give you the best data possible. So it's kind of already doing that in the background. But if you just want to be sure and sort of safe, right, you know, you go ahead and go to that common tab and just make sure that you're getting the best data available. Next on the list here, we have the supplement section. So here you can go ahead and search for things that are categorized as supplements specifically, you know, so if there's maybe like a similar name of a supplement to like a regular food item, but you wanted to adjust the supplement, you can go ahead and come here um, and find that there. Next is the brands section. This will show store bought brand name products if you're looking for something specific. The restaurant tab next up. So this is going to show foods from restaurants that are included in chronometers database. So they won't have everything, but you can see like right off the bat here, like they have, you know, every sort of item of food from Chipotle, for example, as because that's what I was searching for the last time I was using this tab. Um, and again, they probably won't have your local mom and pop Italians restaurant foods on here, but they will have like Olive Garden or something like that a little bit more common mainstream and just broader like that. And then lastly, we have the beverage section where you can go ahead and search for just beverages. So that's some different ways that you can go ahead and add food and go ahead and refine your search. Now let's go ahead and come back to this add food section. We'll go ahead and scroll back over to all. And then what we can do here is you, up in this top bar here, uh, where it says search all foods, that little orange circle, we can go ahead and select that. And then what it's going to do here is we've got some different options here. So, you know, we can go ahead and turn on enable multi add. So this is really good. If you're, let's say you're going to go make a breakfast scramble, right? You're going to have eggs, onions, and bell peppers. So we'd go ahead and turn on multi add. And then what we can do is we'll go ahead, type in eggs, go ahead and select that. We'll go ahead, and select three, we'll hit save. And then you can see at the bottom here right now, it says one review items. So, so far we have one item in our multi add select. Next, let's go ahead and add in some onion. Go ahead and select that uh, half of a large onion. That's a lot of onion, but sure. For this example, that's fine. Um, and then we'll go ahead and add those red bell peppers. We'll go ahead and save that. Now we have these three items to review over here. So we'll go ahead and select that and see that those, those three items that we selected, and then we can go ahead and just add those all to our diary. So that can be super handy. Again, if you're tracking something as you eat or just want to quickly add things without having to click the plus sign, add food, select the food, plus sign, add food, select the food, and just do that multiple times. So again, just any way that you can go ahead and make this whole process easier, you're going to stick with it longer and reach your goal faster, which is sort of the whole reason why I'm making this video series. So again, we have some different options. If we come back here and press that little orange circle in the top search bar, you can go ahead and select how you want to sort, whether that's alphabetical, reverse alphabetical, most frequent or most recent. So then down below that, you can go ahead and select which database you want to search from. I would probably just keep this on all the best uh, searches are going to be at the top. But if you wanted to look at a specific database, you can go ahead and filter that there. And one note on the databases there. So uh, chronometers website says that, you know, for food entries from our lab analyzed databases like the USDA and the NCCDB, those will have the most accurate nutrition data. So I would probably try to select from one of those if you can. And if not, it's probably not the end of the world, but that's going to give you the best data possible. So there you have it. There are the different ways you can go ahead and add food to your chronometer diary. In the next video, we're going to be going over how to create custom meals, custom recipes, as well as custom foods, which you're not going to want to miss. So be sure to stick around for that. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more videos just like this. I'm doing a whole series on chronometer to help you make tracking your food as easy as possible so that you can ultimately reach your goals. And if you're watching this video and maybe you're on the free version of chronometer and you're looking to upgrade to the gold version of chronometer, then there will be a link down in the description to save you 10% on your order. So be sure to check that out as well. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. We'll go ahead and see you in the next video. Where
where we'll be going over custom meals, recipes, and foods. Peace.